Well, hello, darling. I'm Randy Ray. This is the Literate Texan. It's May the 1st, which means I can give you a recap of the 12 books that I read in April. 12 books in a month is a really good month for me, but if you pay close attention to the books that I read, you'll notice that some of them were pretty short. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to present these in order from worst to best. None of these books were bad, okay? Well, maybe Point Omega, but even it had its moments. But uh, but anyway, you know, the, the worst book that I read was still a three-star book this, this last month. But I'm just going to go through them in, in some semblance of order. Um, and I left my Kindle in the other room, so I won't be showing off Kindle books. But most of the books that I read, I actually read in, in Dead Tree versions anyway. So to start, number one on my list, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. You know, I've read some Agatha Christie before, and I don't dislike Agatha Christie, but it just doesn't really do much for me. The first one that I read, well, I can't remember the name of it. The Murder of Roger Ackroyd was the first Agatha Christie novel that I read, and I did get a kick out of the ending, and I think that might be what Agatha Christie is best known for is the endings, because apparently the the culprit is usually a surprise of some kind. And, and that was definitely the case with the murder on the Orient Express, which uh, I was discussing the film version with uh, Steve Donahue the other day. Well, I said I was discussing the film version. He asked me if I'd seen the film version, which he said was marvelous. And I, I asked him, I said, do you mean the, the, the new one from Kenneth Branagh? Oh, no, 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 no. The old one uh, from the 70s. And uh, I haven't seen either one of them, actually, so... But uh, but it'll be something to check out. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I keep going back to uh, Agatha Christie maybe once a year, trying to figure out what it is about it that's just not hitting with me. And, uh, you know, th this one was my favorite Agatha Christie novel so far, definitely Murder on the Orient Express. So that was number one. And then number two on my list is also a book that I read on the Kindle, Point Omega by Don DeLillo. And it's a very, very short book, which is which was the best thing about it because I felt like it gave me a taste of Dom DeLillo's writing. But, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly or not, but I mean, you know, he's got a way with words. I mean, the sentences are okay, but there just wasn't much there in terms of story. It was very, just n not much happened. Okay, so there, there, are, bookends to the, there are bookends to the story. Uh where they're watching a version of Psycho at a museum that's been slowed down so that it takes 24 hours to watch the whole movie, and, and which, of course, changes the aesthetic experience quite a bit. But that's not the main plot, and I'm not sure how the theme of that ties into the main plot. I don't know. Maybe I'm not smart enough, uh, which is very possible. But the rest of the book has to do with a documentary filmmaker who's interviewing an older man who worked for the government, determining, you know, what what might potentially cause the next war and what that outcome might be. But, uh, you know, it was okay, but yeah, he gets to know him, and then, you know, he gets to know her daughter, they wind up living in the house and becoming a sort of de facto family. The daughter's grown too, and she eventually disappears. Sorry, spoiler alert. And then number three on my list of books that I read in April is Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby, which I guess S.A. Cosby is a very popular writer in the crime niche, but fairly new. I think this is his fourth or fifth book. But this one's about um, a couple of men. There's a black man and a white man, and they were somewhat estranged from their sons because their sons were both gay. And their sons... Their sons are murdered, and it's it's a hate crime, and they come together to try to f go find the killers themselves and and get justice. And it was okay, I mean, but it was a little heavy-handed. And then the next on my list is the Stars, My Destination. Oh, oh, I actually have a copy of Razor Blade Tears that I can show you here. So it's obviously my Book of the Month Club edition. And then I've got Alfred Bester's The Stars, My Destination which is part of my reading for Spring into Adventure. And 
It was an okay book, but the main character was so unsympathetic that I just, I couldn't find myself loving it. So those were all three-star reads, those four books. Number five is another one that I read on the Kindle called Through the Magic Door, which was written by Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, who wrote a lot more than just Sherlock Holmes stories. But this is a very short book about Conan Doyle's love of reading in books. And he takes the attitude of, um, it's written from the perspective that you're hanging out in his library with him and he's just talking to you, which is a really cool device. But not only does he talk about how much he loves reading and how much he loves books, but he waxes on uh, poetically about how much he loves the books in his library and where they're located, what they look like, and so forth. Uh, one of the nice little anecdotes in there, excuse me, I got wet my whistle. I'm on medications that sometimes make my throat dry. But one of the, one of the nice little uh, moments in there is when he's talking about how he, he started his book collection and he would have a sandwich and a beer for lunch every day and it cost three pennies. And every day he would walk past the bookstore to go get his lunch and he would, he would try to encourage himself to buy one of these bargain books for three pennies, but most of the time he bought food instead. But he said about once out of every six times he'd buy a book and that's how his book collection got started. But it's full of neat little stuff like that and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. I'm a fan of Arthur Conan Doyle, so getting a peek into his mind, um, th different than, than just reading his fiction, was a lot of fun. Also, I read Horseman Passed By by Larry McMurtry. This was his first novel, and it's about a ranch that's, you know, going through hard times. This was made into a movie called HUD that starred Paul Newman, which is excellent. If you've never seen it, you should. But this was the first novel that Larry McMurtry wrote. It's also the first novel by Larry McMurtry that I read. And that's just a coincidence. I read it in college. It was an assignment, but it's a marvelous book and uh, very sad in a lot of ways. And I read The Princess Bride. This is number seven. Okay. And I absolutely adore this novel. It's wonderful. And it is different from the movie. But it was written by the same guy. William Goldman wrote the screenplay to the movie and the novel. But you get two stories in one in this one because, and, and they're both fiction, but uh, the frame story in this one, rather than you know Peter Falk just coming over and reading to Fred Savage, has to do with the actual author, William Goldman, and his experiences you know, in Hollywood, casting the film and getting it made and, and that sort of thing. But, it, but that's not how it really happened. It's very obvious that it's fictional. So I also read, where did it go? Oh, there it is. The Stranger by Albert Camus. Okay, so this was a bummer of a book. Huh? It was beautifully written, and I like that kind of hard-boiled style. Um, but it's a very famous classic novel. I think most people describe it as an existential novel. Um it's short enough that you can easily read it in an afternoon. I'm not gonna lie, I was trying to pump my numbers up for April since I didn't read anything to speak of in February and March. So, and then She by H. Ryder Haggard was a really pleasant surprise for me because I read the King Solomon's Minds, which I liked, but it would have been a three-star read for me. This was a four-star read for me. And it's uh, it, it's definitely an adventure novel, you know, but it's got to do with this woman, this beautiful white woman who rules a, a, a tribe of Africans and uh, these American explorers go out there to meet her. And, uh, oh, it's, ter it's terrific. It's just great fun. I also read The Real Cool Killers by Chester Himes, which is cartoonishly violent. I could easily see Quentin Tarantino making a movie from this. It is part of a series of books about Coffin Ed Johnson and Gravedigger Jones, which might be the greatest name for a pair of police officers I've ever seen in fiction. But I think there's seven books in this series. Right now, I am also reading Cotton Comes to Harlem by the same author in the same series, and I'm doing it as a buddy read with Mark over at Book Time with Elvis. And all these people that I'm mentioning, you know, if you you probably know who they are. If you watch my channel, you probably watch their channel too. But if you don't know who they are, I'm going to link to their site down in the description so that you can go find them because, you know, Mark and Steve are both well worth watching. 
And then, okay, so that was number 10. Number 11 is a book called Desert Solitaire by Edward Abbey, which I read on my Kindle, so I don't have it here to show you. But it's, uh, it's essentially really similar to Walden in a lot of respects. But instead of living by a pond in Massachusetts, the narrator lives uh, in the desert in Utah as a, as a, as a park ranger. And um, anyway, Edward Abbey's a really interesting character. He's a very radical environmentalist. And uh, this is a nonfiction work, but it's beautifully written. Uh, his personality comes off the page constantly, every word, every sentence. It's really amazing. So that that, that was definitely a five-star read. It was a reread for me. I'd, I'd read it before, but I got a lot more out of it this time as an older man than I got out of it as a younger man. And then finally, another five-star read. This is number 12, The Hobbit. And what can I say about The Hobbit? But This was also spring into adventure choice. Most of these books were spring into adventure choices, uh, definitely The Star's My Destination, The Princess Bride, She, The Real Cool Killers, Desert Solitaire, even though it was a true story, was an adventure novel. But The Hobbit is just fantastic. Probably hadn't read it in 20, 25 years, but I remember as a kid being just obsessed with it. And I probably read it seven or eight times, something like that. I know I read The Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I guess isn't really a trilogy. It's just a long novel that was published in three volumes. But, uh, but I know... I read The Lord of the Rings six times by the time I was in sixth grade, and I've only read it once as an actual adult. Uh, it's marvelous. It's absolutely marvelous. And it follows a lot of the same story beats as The Hobbit, believe it or not. The Hobbit's more of a children's story, but it's, it's, it's wonderful. And it is quintessentially adventure. I mean, Bilbo Baggins is a hobbit who lives in a little town called the Shire, and hobbits don't like to go on adventures, but when the Dwarves, a bunch of dwarves and the wizards show up and they want to hire Bilbo to be the burglar. And like, well, why not? Let's go try it. Uh, the character development for Bilbo Baggins in particular is an interesting aspect of the novel. If I had any criticism at all of The Hobbit, I would have liked to have seen more pages about the Battle of Five Armies towards the end of the book. So those are the 12 books that I read in April in more or less order from worst to best. But like I say, even the worst ones were good. They were three stars. So thanks for watching. I've got more videos coming up. I'm feeling pretty good these days. So, uh, so maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching and stay sexy.